Hello, and welcome to the SirsGroup.com podcast. I am Barbara. And I'm JC. And today we are tackling the topic of biotoxins. I love these podcasts. I just get to nerd out for like 10 minutes. It's good. Biotoxins is one of my faves. I'm excited to dig into it. I mean, this is literally the cause of all of our problems. So it's funny that we're excited to talk about them. But obviously, um, it's fun because it's not just mold, guys. I know SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome is sometimes called mold illness. And that is maybe what I mean, I think the statistics are 80% of SIRS cases are mold induced. Is that the, the, you know, the, the closest estimate we have? But there are a lot of possible other things. And like weird things too. I'm going to seem excited this whole time. And I apologize just now, you guys, because you're going to be like, what the heck? This is making people sick. Why do you sound so excited? And I'm going to be like mold and bacteria. Oh, man, I love it already. All right. I'm just going to set that expectation at the front. Yep. I love it. It's good. All right. So what, which, what, which one's your favorite? Just kidding. What, <laughs> which one would you like to dig into first? Well, I think first, so SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Hi, if you're new, this is kind of our thing. Um, but it happens when somebody who is genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a t- biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. Like Barbara said, there's a bunch of different ones. The most common one is mold. So we know that 25% of the population has the haplotypes for biotoxins. And when we're talking about haplotypes, these are the genetic haplotypes. It's the first half of the SIRS blood work that you get that helps you identify which biotoxins you might be susceptible to. That's a hard word for me. Uh, I forgot where I was going with this. 25% of people have the haplotype, 50% of buildings, according to the EPA, an actual government agency who probably doesn't want to show the full extent of any information, um, says that 50% of buildings in the U.S. are water damaged. So when you combine those two numbers together, you're looking at about 4 4 billion, 4 million people in the U.S. likely have SIRS due to mold illness. Yes. And that number, I I love that you said that number uh, here because I think that really shows the impact. Um, because people don't realize how common it is. Yes, only 25% of the population really has to worry about having SIRS. Okay, it's a quarter of the population, but man, that's a lot of people. And given the number of buildings that get water damage, we freaking build houses out of mold food. Could Mm. we use something other than drywall, (laughs) please, for the love of... Anyway, so yes, it's, it's just, it is common because of how we build homes and how often water creeps its way into things, because that's just what water does. And uh, and then, of course, given that 25% of the population gets affected, which can explain why within the same household, one person gets really sick and the other person doesn't. And they and I was it in their head or whatever, you know, mm. they, they jump to that terrible conclusion. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm so sorry. My internet skipped. So I was talking over you for a second there. But I was uh, nerding out earlier today looking for historical references to mold. Um, and it's been a thing for a really long time in Leviticus and the Bi- the Bible. There's there's like t- entire sections about what to do if you find mold in your home. So it's not like this is a new thing. I think it's there's I'm sure people are like, oh, my gosh, I'm hearing about SIRS a lot all of a sudden. And I think part of it is your, you know, reticulated, reticulated activating syndrome. Nope. I'm going to not try and say that. It's the mechanism in your brain where if you mention a Tesla, you see a lot of Teslas. Yeah, I'm sure that's part of it. But also, like this was just found in 1996. So I think people are becoming more aware of it as time goes on. Right. And by this, you mean the actual named illness, chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Right. But historically, it's always been a thing. Right. Got it. So what's your favorite biotoxin? Just kidding. Um, yeah. Um, so I would have to say, like, I like the weird ones would be my my biotoxin of choice. Like my biotoxin, the thing that most likely triggered my SIRS is mold. And that's boring. What would be really cool is if it was a spider bite. So brown recluse spiders can actually, if you are, if you get a bite and you have the haplotype that you're sensitive to their bites, a spider bite can cause 
chronic inflammatory response syndrome. It's like anti Spider Man. It's the spider bite with none of the benefits. Yeah. I mean, if you could become Spider Man at the same time, I don't know. I might take that. I that might be a net situation. positive. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the case, unfortunately. Um, the other in- fun little insect that can cause the issues is, of course, its friend, the tick, um, with the whole Lyme disease thing. Yeah. And Lyme is, man, I feel so bad for people that have SARS from Lyme because it's like you can't just jump into the SARS protocol. So the very first step of the SARS protocol, when we talk about the SARS protocol, we're talking about the Shoemaker protocol. Um, It's the only clinically proven path to healing from chronic inflammatory response syndrome. But the very first step is removing exposure. So for people who are in mold, that might mean moving or remediating. Um, For people with Lyme, you have to do the Lyme treatment first. Yeah. So it just adds a whole extra layer and time and money to everything that you have to clear out. Absolutely. There's other more common biotoxins like algae. An algae outbreak is actually how they first discovered SIRS in 1996. Um, Also bacteria like fisteria in fish or cyanobacteria. Um, There's some that are still being discovered. Um, Shoemaker just released a article about post-COVID syndrome, PCS, and it rep- it presents very much like a biotoxin illness, but they haven't yet identified that haplotype. And speaking of the vid, um, there are certain things that you can get injected into yourself that should present prevent other illnesses that can... <laughs> well like done. How many words I used in that one? Well uh, done. <laughs> that can, uh, once it's in your body give you a SERS reaction to it, basically cause SERS. It, it becomes a biotoxin within your body. Um, there, And I'm not talking about any crazies or like, you know, any conspiracy theories here. It's just that there are certain chemicals that are used in the making of those medications, which can help a lot of people sometimes. Uh, but in others, in people with the genetic susceptibility to not be able to clear out those biotoxins and to treat it as a biotoxin, it's a a bad situation inside your body. And then this one might actually be my favorite. So there is what I like to call the UNO wild card from hell. It's -hmm. called the multi-susceptibility gene. And this haplotype means that any of the biotoxins can impact you. This is one of my favorite facts about us, Barbara. We have the same haplotypes. Yes. We, we twinned it up without even realizing it. Um, I remember Judy, because she did, she did my um, genetic haplotype right before she did yours or vice versa. It doesn't matter. She did ours back to back and she had to redo the other one like two or three times because she was like, no, 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 this can't be. <laughs> I just did this. Like, cause you know, it's almost like math, like to go through and like, and, and, uh, you know, pick out which to be able to interpret the, the, the DNA results of your lab work to figure out your genetic haplotype. It's a complicated process. Certainly no one with SIRS can probably do it for themselves. I'll say that much. But so Judy did it for us and yeah, it was the exact same thing. (laughs) It's cute. (laughs) But one thing I wanted to talk about and something I realized recently is, um, we have, heard a lot in media recently about breast implant illness Mm. and i think there's this like growing movement towards getting breast implants removed because of the sickness people experience from them and i was thinking about it the whole thing with SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome is that we are genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin so it's the eliminating the biotoxin part that the actual protocol addresses but with breast implants, you have a biotoxin living inside your body. So the failure to eliminate is not necessarily genetic. It's just that you have placed this foreign object in your body. It lives there. It's circulating through your blood. So perhaps for people who have breast implant illness, they might be able to just remove the implant and get better. Like they might not have SIRS in the sense that they don't have the genes for SIRS, but they are experiencing SIRS symptoms because they are being exposed to a biotoxin within their body. Yeah. I feel like you will summarize this a lot better. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's wild to me. Um, 
and it, and it's not just those kinds of implants. I I think that there is a there's a chance that your body's going to react poorly to maybe anything that you've permanently placed inside of it that isn't normally inside of it. Um, you know, you have n- easier things like piercings, but maybe, you know, but that there's also like dental implants. I have one. Hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. Um, I remember I had foot surgeries at one point and there was a lot of metal put in my feet. And then thankfully I had a later surgery to remove that metal after all of my bones had healed. Uh, and I'm thankful for that because who knows what that could have uh, caused if I just left all those pins in my feet. Um, some women use things like IUDs as birth control. I am one of them. And uh, that's a concern of mine as well. What could that object, foreign object, be you know, causing in my body? Um, so I think that it's just the only reason I bring this up is not to like freak anyone out, like, oh my God, all these things, but just to just to think for a second before you decide to have a procedure, if you haven't already, just think about what that means. Um, you know, know what the symptoms are that, you know, so that you know, okay, this isn't, my body's not handling this well. Um, I think all of that, just do the extra research, I guess, is my point to really um, be as safe about it as you can, especially in the case whether it's elective or necessary surgery, I think that it's it's important for you to know what it is that you're putting in your body and what the possible risks are, including SIRS. Yeah, even just being aware and knowing your timeline, like, oh, this is when my health started to go downhill. Like yeah. maybe that lines up with something being implanted for you. And that might just be like another piece of the puzzle that makes sense. Was there um, any other fun little causes of SIRS that you wanted to uh, address today? I really think those are the big ones. Like I said, they're still discovering more biotoxins, and I think they will continue to discover more biotoxins, especially as we continue to create more biotoxins in our modern day environment. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing is being aware and a huge piece of SIRS treatment for SIRS patients is like really knowing what your biotoxin is to make sure you're not continuously being exposed. So getting your haplotypes tested, understanding what biotoxins you might be sensitive to, and then just like really thinking back and trying to remember like, is there a time when you may have been exposed to water damage or were you walking through tall grass and you went camping and there might be a tick bite situation going on there? Um, I think just awareness, being aware is really key for the biotoxins. Yep, absolutely. And um yeah, I I don't really ever want to go to places with ticks. Like that's a thing that I have no. I mean, they already freaked me out. Yeah. I, my dog had had them at one point when we first adopted him from the shelter, like not shocking. Mama bear came out and I was able to like get those suckers out like the safe way without leaving the head in like the whole ugh. I don't know how I did that, but I just like did it. I it's just the whole anyway. <laughs> I uh, I don't know if I ever got bit during that point, but my, I think my symptoms, that's a moment, but I don't, again, I don't know. You don't know, but if you're around ticks, that's like a thing that mm-hmm. you have to worry about. Um, again, it's back to what you just said about the awareness, but, uh, but yeah, I, the whole spider bite tick bite thing, it's cool and all, but man, it's yeah, not for me. I'm glad that I didn't, I probably didn't have that issue. Yeah, I literally hate this conversation so much right now because just the idea of a tick like on my body makes me want to leave my skin. We were so excited when we started this conversation. Well, I didn't know we'd get in depth about ticks. <laughs> they're, they're such a gross creature. Like, come on, God. Like, really? <laughs> they shouldn't yeah. exist. They shouldn't Thank exist. They're cursed. I mean, I'll take a cockroach over a tick and that's saying a lot because cockroaches might be one of my least favorite insects that exist but ticks beat them yeah cockroaches just like look like they were intentionally made to be disgusting like that was <laughs> that's their entire purpose in life and they will survive everything like they're going right. to survive the nuclear holocaust right proud of them great for them horrifying and, for us and they won't give you sirs probably i have no idea now i'm gonna look into that <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is fun and gross. 
Uh, I hope you guys learned something um, for more support and love or direction or guidance or any of those fun things. Uh, join us at the SIRSgroup.com. We'll see you over there.